Okay, we're going to start making the folder that will become the journal cover. So again, one single uh, manila heavy-duty folder. And you'll see where it's got these spines. In the spine, it's got the creases there. So that if you have a big loaded up folder, you can make this score line here at the widest part, or any of those sections, and fold it. And then your folder is going to have more contents. Well, I looked at that and I thought, hey, that's a nice size for a journal. And those three lanes in there would be nice to guide you through one signature for each lane. So that's how I kind of got the idea of using the folder and doing this. So I do make that score on that widest part of that spine and and uh, that will define the spine of my folder. And then I want to mark up from the very bottom to nine inches. Make a little mark there. And maybe out here. And I'm doing the marks. I don't have to use the marks if I'm going to use my paper cutter. But I want to make sure everybody that knows can figure out how to do this if they don't have a paper cutter. So we'll do the marks. And then from the rightmost score on the spine, I'm going to come out five and three quarter inches from there. Make a little mark. And the same on this leftmost score line. Five and three quarters from there. And then I'm going to use my paper trimmer now. But if you don't have a paper trimmer, you would cut to your marks and have the basis of your cover. So I'm going to use my handy dandy little cutter pillar. I love this thing. And fingers cooperate there we go and I'm going to save this piece I'm going to make a template for this punching of the holes later on there and then I'm going to go five and three quarters out from this side and then nine inches high and Viola you got yourself a journal cover okay so you can save these little bits to do whatever with after if you do a lot of them you can get a bunch of these and have a little mini make a little mini book out of that while I have my cutter out I'm gonna cut this um, fingers to work. I'm going to cut about an inch wide on this and save that for a template. Get this out of my way. And then I'm going to use my trusty bone folder to really define these creases on the edges on the widest part of that spine. And I want to cut this oops, nine inches. I'll just use my scissors for that since I already put it away. I always do that every time. Okay, now I got nine inches for a template. And I want to try to fold this in half. Let's try if I see if my ruler will assist me. 
It doesn't have to be exactly in half. You just want a straight crease in it. I've been having trouble with my right thumb. Just had a cortisone shot in there and my grip is all cattywampus. There we go. Now you want to mark an inch from the top and the bottom on your template. Get in there. And this I'm going to do with a... Do I have a pen here that will work? Yeah. I'm going to make a mark at this at an inch there. And this is nine inches long, so I'm going to come up to eight inches and make a mark there. And half a nine is four and a half, so I'm going to make a mark there in the center. And then grab my handy dandy mat and all, and I'm going to make a hole on my marks. I'm going to use this template to go into my folder and let's do it this way again. You want to kind of go in each lane. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use this differently than I intended because my eyes are not so great anymore. And to be quicker about it, this is going to be easier. And you might want to just do it this way anyway. So you want to you want to line this these marks up in the center of each of the three scores down the spine. And you want to make a mark in the center lane of each set of folds. There's signature one. And actually, you know what? I'm going to abandon my template and I'm going to eyeball it. Some people are not eyeballers. They they don't want they want to measure everything. I am not one of those people, but if you are, a template like that will help you make these more exacting. Ballpark's good enough for me. There we got those marked. Three an inch down, three in the center, and three an inch from the bottom. And now we're going to punch those holes. And after that, we're going to move on to getting the cover adhered to this. through and I'm going to do that to the other six and we'll move on to the cover. Okay now for putting the fabric onto the journal cover. Um, you want to make sure you have an inch and a half to two inches fold over um, when you make your when you make your cover um, so that whatever print you choose to be your journal cover on the inside it's only going to be eight and a half by 11 you want to make sure that you know you're going to have this much of the book sticking out the book cover rather the fabric under the cover so you want to make sure you have enough on either side to do that and what I usually do is I take the cover and I kind of put it under the fabric and play with it and I've done that off camera and I've decided that I'd like this part to be my front cover All right 
and wrap it around just to get an eyeball idea of where you where it wants to be so that's going to be kind of my front cover and then this will be around the back cover so knowing that I want that section of fabric to make sure I have enough I know that I need um, a piece that's going to be about 16 and a quarter by 13 and that's going to give me enough overhang to wrap around the journal oops wrong side so I'm going to measure and cut get this out of the way You know what, for this one, because I have so much white on the edges here, I'm going to go a little bit shy of that. But it's better for you to cut to the directions in the book, because that's going to give you ample overhang. And if you have any little errors in shifting, you can uh, make sure you can compensate for, for that. So I'm just going to take a foot instead of 13 inches, approximately. Let's see, will this tear? Oh, it will, what do you know? I don't usually do that, but I felt brave. I had a moment of bravery overtake me. Get the puckers back out, and I'm just going to rip this in. Trying to take time saving measures so I don't go too overboard on the length of this video which I have a tendency to do. And then this direction you want 16 and a quarter to be sure you got enough. So I got I got 12 there. And then I need four and a quarter more. So I'm going to cut it in this vicinity. I don't know how that would tear through the paint, so I'm just going to make my old crooked cut through there and figure it out from there. Okay, so now we want to take our Yes Paste. You can get this at Michael's. It's about 10 bucks for this big tub. It's a pint. And I like to use a flat bristle brush. And we're going to take the outside of the folder. And you know what? It's all going to get covered, so it doesn't really matter where this ends up. But because the score lines fold it this way naturally, I like to go with the store line, score lines and consider this the outside and this the inside of the book. So I'm going to glue the outside of the book. And you need to dip your brush in the littlest, littlest bit of water. Hang on, let me fill this up a little bit more. My fat brush won't fit in my little necked jar I have here at the moment. I just got back from the Remy retreat with Jody Ole and Jean Skipper and Penny Arrowwood in Ocracoke Island. Uh, it was wonderful, by the way. Um, and all my supplies are still packed, so I'm trying to unpack and get this done. Because the magazine actually hit the newsstands and people's mailboxes before I was told it was going to. So I'm a little bit behind on the videos and I really want to get it out there for you guys. So I wanted it to align with the release of the article. So a little bit of paste because this, a little bit of water on your brush, and I don't mean sopping, I mean just heavily damp. Enough to break up the body of this paste because otherwise it's like axle grease. I'm going to cover the entire cover with this glue. A little bit more water. You can feel it as you start to use it if it kind of gets too thick. If you get it too wet, it's going to roll up off of this. It's kind of like this paper is almost shiny enough that it acts as a little bit of a resist to the glue if it gets too wet. So there's a happy medium in there. It takes me a few times to hit it. 
And yes, I'm going to cover up the holes and we're going to punch back through the fabric once I get it on there. In case you're wondering. I'm just putting the about a sixteenth of an inch of the end of the bristle in the little pot of water and then brushing it off the side of the water, the side of the, the jar rather. Okay, now I'm going to take my fabric face down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move this piece of paper out of the way because all this glue, I don't want that to schmutz up my fabric. Set that aside. Put this good side down and take this glue side down and kind of find your center. I'm going a little crooked because I like this end more. So I'm going to go a little bit more shy on my fold on that end just because of knowing what's there. I like it better. Does that make sense? I like this design back here on the cover better than I like this end of it. So I'm going to try to take advantage and use as much of that as I can on the cover and fold in less. So I'm going to use my bone folder and get this pressed down. And you'll find with this yes paste, you can see how this is happening. That's okay. It will stick. I just go back in. Make sure I don't have any creases. And this is squidged out as smooth as you can get it. All right. And then I go back in. This always happens. And I think it's that resist thing with the fabric that causes this. And I take a little bit thicker bit of the paste on the edges and go back and glue those again around the edges. I haven't had one lift up them and you're going to fold that under and then on top of those fold is going to go the the, uh, the liner print so it's it's all going to be super tucked in never had one come loose so that's not an issue but I do like to get this so it lays nice and flat. I don't want it to open up and buckle and get a bubble in the middle of the front cover at a later date. And check these out. Now this is kind of tacky. I'm just pulling it away and to double glue this as well, just to make double sure. little teeny drop of water. And this one's almost stuck down. So I just got a little corner here to do. Kind of a sloppy glue but it works really well actually and it's pretty inexpensive and I do like that it's brushable instead of just trying to have to use your finger or tool to scrape it around. Got a little bit of a wrinkle in there. Pull that out. 